My guest this morning is a William Kennan Jr., Emeritus Professor of Political Science at Wellesley College. His most recent book, Looking Back on President Barack Obama's Legacy, Hope and Change, was published by the Palgrave Macmillan Company. And a copy of this book can be accessed on the link that I'm going to paste right in the description panel on the upload for this video and in our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Professor Wilbur Rich, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very much happy to hear you. Uh, we are running a series on world history and which is particularly focusing on uh, presidential leadership. I previously had two other guests and we discussed about President Trump. And now I'm excited to have you uh, to discuss this one on President Barack Obama. I understand that this was an edited collection. And so you had other, other contributors to the book. Can you just uh, take me through that process? How did you develop the idea for this book? And uh, what are the other contributors to this book? And how did you get to assemble this team? Well, I, uh, I was at a, the Southern uh, Political Science Association and I gave a paper uh, on uh, President uh, Obama, uh, you know, after he had last former president. And it was an, a panel was around, you know, you know, trying to figure out what he actually accomplished and so forth. And some of the people uh, on the panel did not participate, so I, I, I went out and recruited some other people to uh, to help me write chapters. And uh, so, uh, whenever you do an edited book, you have to go out and and get people who you think are experts on certain things. And this is exactly what I did. But I wrote the first and last uh, conclusion chapter. Um, uh, you know, when you do that, you, you you have to give a kind of overview of what it is you're trying to do. And what I was trying to do is assess his legacy. Uh, I, you know, basically, I was making the argument that he had a transformational impulse. And that is that he wanted to do a lot of things fundamentally, that is to fundamentally change uh, the country, but it was difficult. Uh, and I, I try to talk about the fact he had a very compelling case uh, because he was the first African-American president uh, and the Congress was uh, willing at that time, at least when he first got in office, to give him a victory. And uh, one of the victories, of course, was the Affordable Care Act, which later be, was called uh, Obamacare. But it, they weren't very good at the uh, details of that. So it, it had a lot of problems, uh, you know, trying to get off to a good start. Mm -hmm. So it's still stumbling in a lot of ways, although people don't cover it as much. And I, at that point, when he first passed it, I thought it was going to be a, a major uh, challenge to the way health is, uh, uh, care is, is uh, conducted in this country, but it only really uh, covered very people who don't have a lot of money. So it's, it's interesting. It was a very interesting idea. And he did some other things that I found interesting. And I, I tried to make it up uh, to try to figure out his legacy in terms of what he thought was important and what he would be remembered by, about. So what would you consider to be his uh, main achievements and possibly failures? So I, I gave a speech uh, some time ago before he was elected, I think in 2006 uh, in Europe, and someone asked me out of the audience whether I thought that he would be a candidate for the presidency because he gave this interesting speech at the 2004 uh, convention. And I said, no, it's impossible. Uh, he's a backbencher and he hasn't been in the Senate very long and I doubt very ser seriously mm -hmm. where he will be elected. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I, they, they actually recorded that. And then all of a sudden uh, in 2008, I got a, a phone call uh, from mm -hmm. people in Chicago who, who most, who my, a, per, a person I did not know, and said to me that they were going to run him for president because they wanted to, you know, 
do it while the fire of brand is still hot or whatever expression they use. But every now, that's his name was very, very, uh, uh, it was very on people's minds. So they actually ran him against Hillary Clinton. And I was still thinking, I can't imagine him beating her. Uh, but they gave, but they, 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 you know, and I said that to my class. And what happened was, um, that, as you know, Hillary was a, was a, uh, is a Wellesley graduate, a Wellesley College graduate. And mm -hmm. everybody agreed with me mm -hmm. that he, he couldn't beat her. And what, what she, she made a lot of mistakes, one of which was to allow him to have a ground game in our, Mm -hmm. the state of Norway, and, uh, and, uh, and she, he beat her. And that state is, I was much, uh, very predominantly white. And then he was able to make the case that he could win white votes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, she uh, defeated him in, in uh, New Hampshire, but uh, he then made the, the case in South Carolina that he could win in the South by winning South Carolina. And that was the end of the race for all intents and purposes. Uh, so I, I wasn't sure what it is he was elected to do, okay? Uh, but I understand it now retrospectively that he was in a lot of ways, uh, white people's statement that, that the best man was qualified for the job because he ran against uh, uh, a Republican candidate and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that guy simply was not capable of doing the job. He's a Senator McCain, mm -hmm. I think his name is. Mm -hmm. Or oh, Senator McCain and then Senator Mitt Romney in 2018. Yeah, yeah, that's 18, that's later on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, McCain uh, turned out, he was a war hero, but he turned out to be a very bad candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, he, 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 in the midst of the election, he said that uh, he didn't know anything about the economy and the, we were in the midst of a, a recession. And Obama handled himself quite well that he acted as if he really knew a lot about it. And he asked the right questions when he, when he went before some of these committees and so forth. And uh, uh, McCain uh, you know, decided to stop his campaign and try to do something in quotes about the uh, recession, but when that didn't go well, I said, "Oh, he's going to win this thing," and sure enough, he did. He, he was very good in the uh, debates and so forth. But I wasn't sure what it is he was elected to do until he, his administration was over. It took, took almost eight years for me to figure that out. And what he was elected to do was, uh, in a, many ways, say to the world mm -hmm. that the United States is not a racist country; that mm -hmm. they will vote for a black man if he's qualified. Mm -hmm. Okay, they will vote for him if he can demonstrate that that he was qualified. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had this very exotic background. You know, his father came from Africa, Kenya. His mother was a a white lady from Kansas or someplace, and uh, and he, you know, so he was a biracial guy. But he also had this international image because he had lived in Indonesia and so mm -hmm. and so on, and people found it absolutely fascinating. Uh, that, he, that and then he married this uh, African American woman from Chicago, who was very successful, uh, Princeton grad, Harvard Law, and so he was also Harvard Law. So in a sense, I saw it as they were making a statement. The white people who voted for him, and many working class white people voted for him because hey, he was obviously the most qualified man in the race, and that was also true they discovered uh, when he ran against Mitt Romney. But anyway, uh, he was reelected. So, the, so there are lots of things that he wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I don't think he had the, the, the wherewithal to do it. I mean, he was not a Lyndon Johnson who understood the Senate. Mm -hmm. he's on, Lyndon Johnson spent 25 years and he was leader of the Senate. He didn't understand uh, how policy is made. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had some idea, but he didn't understand how difficult policy was made. It, it, a good example was that was when he uh, tried to get the uh, Affordable Care Act passed, mm -hmm. which was his uh, uh, premier achieve, achievement. 
uh, was that he, he, he thought that he could persuade all the Republicans by allowing them to put things in the bill, debating it with him and so forth and so on. Turns out no Republicans voted for it, okay? Mm -hmm. And it passed through the Senate and the House basically as, uh, as a partisan measure. Now he allowed the, you know, the Republicans to, to, to play with it, delay it, and vote. so finally he got it through. But that was really because Nancy Pelosi was an old head uh, in the Senate, I mean, the House, and she was able to get it, get it through. Um, but anyway, I think that was his crowning a, a achievement. Um, now, he's given credit for mm -hmm. uh, re you know, repealing uh, don't ask, don't tell in the military. That was a very important uh, change in the military. And uh, it allowed uh, uh, the uh, gay community to support him. So he did a lot for that community. Uh, but then, you know, uh, Senator McConnell said that uh, my job as, as, as the uh, majority leader is to make sure that after, after he uh, lost the election, uh, the, the Democrats lost control of the House in 2010, uh, my job is to keep him from getting reelected. So he provided by that statement uh, that everybody, all the black community thought, hey, this guy could do a lot of things if McConnell would allow him to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, could, he, has, he has the impulse to do that, but he doesn't have the support of the leadership, uh, which is now in the hands of the Republicans. So mm -hmm. he was able to use that as a way of getting uh, getting his uh, reelection momentum started, uh, but uh, there were you know he you know he he he, he uh, there were other things that he did with terribly symbolic things. I mean, he had this per so called perfect family with two daughters, a wife, mm -hmm. and uh, you know all that was very important for African American women because. They saw a woman who really looked like them. Yeah, yeah. she was no uh, biracial lady. She didn't, you know, she was looked like them, mm -hmm. and they really loved her. I mean, uh, and that helped him considerably. And she, she, she handled herself quite well as first lady, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that helped him. Uh, but when you start thinking about uh, some of the things that happened, I mean, he did a great job in quotes. Uh, trying to move the economy away from the recession because the Congress gave him the money to do that. Uh, and, and he tried to get some things off the ground, but it, it just wasn't is what wasn't there. And of course, we were still in the in, in a fight, uh, a war in in Iraq and still in a war in uh, in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and he really had no uh, no. no uh, solution for that. And he allowed the military to uh, convince him that the surge was necessary and he was able to get some things done in, in, in some ways. Um, but otherwise, uh, there are very few things. Uh, uh, he got the Nobel Prize before he, mm -hmm. before he I don't know, before he did anything. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, basically speaking, the world was like ready for, for this confirmation that we are not a racist country, mm -hmm. and and you know he was going to be the savior of the world in quotes. Okay, mm -hmm. so when he's talking about the Arab Spring, when he went made that that statement in in uh, in Egypt, everybody was saying, "Wow, this is a tremendous breakthrough." Um, and it turns out that, that some things did happen. A lot of things happened that no one expected. And there were a lot mm -hmm. of people demonstrating and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. But it gave a lot of uh, people who lived under authoritarian governments uh, hope for the future. So that, uh, and so, uh, that, so that's why I said it was a transformational impulse. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to transfer the transform the nation, you need to have a creative set of agenda items, something that can can be uh, organized and passed through this. Through the through the uh, the Congress, because mm -hmm. the Congress will pass almost anything 
if you give them uh, some, you know, some goodies that go along with that, but they don't, after they pass it, <laughs> then it's left up to people to what? Implement it. Uh, and sometimes the, the administrative structure of that thing is, can be a very bad, but uh, you know, so I, you know, he did a lot of very important symbolic things uh, when this uh, people, uh, uh, this young man killed all those people in South Carolina, in the South Carolina church, he went down and I thought that was, was is very emotional and everything else. So in many ways, I think that a, a black people appreciated who he was, uh, they identified with him, they wanted him to succeed. White liberals wanted him to succeed also because mm -hmm. they were saying that, hey, uh, and, he, and he proved for the first time in American history mm -hmm. that a, a, a black man could, could uh, manage the job of leading the country, in quotes, mm -hmm. uh, something that the framers of the Constitution uh, could not imagine, okay? Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was very important symbolically, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and but like any other president, uh, the political realities that you inherit from your predecessors uh, is are still there, and you have to try to overcome them. But if you don't have a big program, you know, uh, a lot of Democratic presidents had that, like uh, Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman, and Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know the. New Deal, the Fair Deal, and the and and the Great Society. If you don't have it, a kind of programmatic program, mm -hmm. then not very much gets done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but you know, I, I think at some point, as I said in in the, in the first chapter in that book, I think that he saw himself as a as a uh, he, he was saying the country elected me that says something about the country okay that's and true that's true he was he, he was uh, and it, that's very important then he saw him in himself as a as kind of an example for for uh, uh, african americans mm -hmm. uh, and you know that was an interesting way of looking at it uh but he's also by saying that by saying the country this this is a great country that elected a black man to be its leader Mm -hmm. and that's that's very flattering to to white people mm -hmm. white people some people didn't even vote for him loved him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay so uh so you know uh and he did that he knew how to do that he knew how to go in he, he was a great he wasn't he didn't have yeah he was a great speaker and he could be possessed he could act like a professor uh, by trying to explain things to people, and and the media loved that stuff, you know. Uh, so his interaction with the media was very good. He respected them, and so forth. They respected him, and it worked very very well for him. Uh, so now, if you are to look at the the leadership and governance style of President Barack Obama, do you see um, similarities and differences? With uh, some of his predecessors, he he came. He was elected after uh, 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 George W. Bush. Uh, George W. Bush came from an entirely different background. His father was president. He was part of the aristocracy uh, in the United States. Um, I uh, their styles were quite different. Uh, but, George W. Bush uh, did not present himself as this, uh, as a major player in American politics. In fact, what he did was say that, uh, that I, you know, after that 9-11, people saw him as, uh, you know, as a military leader, as, uh, you know, and that's how they viewed him. Um, I, 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 he did some interesting stuff in education and so forth, but uh, so, but by the end of his his administration, the country was in a very, uh, it, it, what we call the Great Recession, and uh, it, it was obvious that he was ready to get out of there because it was nothing he could do. Okay, so uh, so in a sense, uh, 
Bush started the whole reversal of that uh, with the people he appointed to get, to get him out of that. Uh, and Obama continued that. He, he hired uh, some people that had worked in the previous administration uh, to help him get over the recession. And, and, and the way they got over the recession was to do the same thing that Roosevelt did, and that is to uh, do uh, to do a lot of things, give a lot of money to state government, and 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 uh, and uh, you know, and uh, put some money in the economy, and it finally recovered. But the the cause of the recession had to do with something that with housing and and uh, subprime loans and a variety of mistakes that the banking industry made. So, uh, so he was very different from, from, uh, from George W. Bush, and he was very different from George uh, H. W. Bush, uh, and obviously he was, he was different from uh, uh, Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. So, so, but you know, uh, every president uh, inherits a lot of policy, a lot of problems uh, that he, not, he cannot necessarily put his stamp on. I mean, in other words, I think that he did a lot in terms of symbolically, in terms of making black people look competent. competent. Mm -hmm. They could do big jobs. I think he did a lot in that regard. Uh, but in terms of moving the ball, in terms of racism in this country, I don't think he did a lot to that. I think a lot of people said, were saying afterwards, I voted for Obama, so therefore I'm not a racist. I mean, mm -hmm. white people saying that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so in, in many ways, uh, they were saying, uh, we had a black president, we have done that, we're gonna go to something else, okay? Uh, and they went to, obviously to Trump. But, you know, I, I, there are lots of things that Obama did that made Trump possible. And uh, he, uh, and a lot of things that Hillary Clinton did that made Trump possible, okay? But uh, I, I don't know how history will look at him. I mean, in this latest book I, I'm writing, I don't mention him very much because because uh, I'm, I'm I'm really dealing with the big the biggies the po big uh, post uh, depression poli mm -hmm. uh, politicians and presidents and and uh, he was he was he is he was an important one but he wasn't the one that really made a difference in the presidency I don't think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he you know uh, I mean. One of the first things I said when he became president is that why is why is he you know what why is he appointing all these weird people mm -hmm. to, to his staff? And I couldn't understand that. I, first of all, I couldn't understand why he appointed uh, Biden to be his vice president. I didn't understand that. And people kept telling me, well, he needs a white boy, a white man rather, uh, to um, to to appeal to white people. And yeah, I, well. There were lots of lots of white politicians who were much quali more qualified than Biden for the job. For mm -hmm. the job, and he mm -hmm. didn't he didn't select them. So I said, God, when he did that, I start worrying. I mean, I start in my lectures. I start thinking, what is what is wrong with him? Mm -hmm. uh, and he appointed a lot of people that I thought thought were not very qualified for the jobs that they were asked to do, and uh, they were part of the uh, Democratic Party and I guess the establishment, the Washington establishment, but there was very few people on his staff mm -hmm. that had any kind of creative ability, uh, any, any new thoughts about how things should be done. So a lot of stuff he did was rather routine, which is very, very shocking. Mm -hmm. So we got mm -hmm. caught up, we meaning academics, we got caught up in his, in, in, in how he was presenting his, himself and his family. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what does that got to do with anything? But I, you know, basically, you know, Americans 
really care about what happens to the first family. And, and I'm thinking, this is an opportunity. And he, he isn't seizing it. Because I say it, because he started talking about, he started referencing himself. Uh, uh, this is my presidency. Mm -hmm. And a lot of black people say, wait a minute, this is our presidency. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we 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 really wanted this for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of black people thought that once we got it, in quotes, that a lot of things would change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't really understand the nature of the presidency and the power of the presidency. You know, and and I don't really believe he understood that well when he was a president. He also he discovered that anything he said was going to be recorded in history, but there were, you know, and he tried to seize as many opportunities as he could, but, you know, he, you know, he, he tried to give the impression that he was not, you know, he was not overcome by the Washington community. He spent a lot of time with his daughters doing their homework and stuff. He wasn't going out, which is very good. I mean, it was, you, know, you know, a lot of black people, um, enjoyed that to say there's a, there's a black guy there's no scandals or anything you know and he handled the job very well and we are proud of that that he didn't have a scandal and so forth and i you know i was saying okay what what else i mean just to be scandal free what does that mean uh but you know uh it was interesting it was it was you know i spent eight years watching that and you know trying to figure out what was going on and I realized that at some point, especially after uh, he was reelected uh, in his mm -hmm. sixth year, that mm -hmm. he decided that, hey, I'm just gonna ride this out. You know, if something comes up, I'll take care of it, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna ride it out. You know, he just, you know, he just, you know, was a lame duck guy mm -hmm. and he ended up coming out saying, I'm gonna use the telephone. I'm gonna use uh, my executive pen uh, orders to do a bunch of stuff you know, DACA and so forth and so on. I, I, I mean, I, I was, uh, I, I, did, I had no idea what it is he was trying to do mm -hmm. uh, uh, by doing that, but it, it fed into this notion that he would have done more if white folks had allowed him to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Republicans had allowed him to him do to it. Do it. Yeah. 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 It, it wasn't clear to me that 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 was his his goal at all. I mean, it wasn't like he had, you know, a big, you know, mandate to do serious immigration reform. I mean, you know, what I mean, um, and it wasn't clear to me that he knew how to, even if he had such a thing, what would he have to give up in order to get it passed through through the Congress? I mean, uh, Ronald Reagan was a Republican, and he got a lot of um, a, a big uh, uh, reform of the immigration. In fact, he granted us some amnesty and so forth. So, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know what was going on in his head. Um, and he, you know, he he gave some interviews trying to explain what he was trying to do. Uh, and, but you know, we as black people, me, uh, not not necessarily as me as a as a presidential watcher, but as a black person, I invested a lot in him, you know, because it was a very important to black people mm -hmm. that he was successful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you found yourself unconsciously defending him. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you wanted the world to know that black professionals could do things. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were just as competent as white professional. It was very important. You didn't know you that was happening to you, but it was. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out why it is, and I'm, you know, you know, you know, so involved and uh, you know, protecting him, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Wilbur Rich. Uh, viewers and listeners, this was Professor Wilbur Rich. Uh, he is my guest today. Uh, he is a William Cannon Jr. Emeritus Professor of Political Science at Wellesley College. His most recent book, Looking Back 
on President Barack Obama's legacy, hope, and change was published by the Palgrave Macmillan Company. And a copy of this book can be accessed on the link that I'm going to paste right in the description panel of this video and on our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Professor Wilbur, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Wonderful. This was good. Have a good day. You do the same.